Uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this short video is going to detail how to undertake an independent samples t-test uh, using Microsoft Excel 2016 and in particular using the data analysis tool pack uh, which is a plugin that you can plug into uh, Excel 2016. Uh, like in previous videos maybe I'll just make a little point. I'm, I, I'm running Excel here on a Mac uh, and only Excel 2016 comes with the plugin, uh, the data analysis tool pack plugin uh, for Mac. So that's the 2016 version, it does have the data analysis tool pack. If you're running uh, Excel on Windows, uh, well, most uh, versions of Excel actually come packaged with the data analysis tool pack. So if you're running on Windows, there's no problem. If you're running on Mac, there might be a little bit of an issue that you, you'll have to have Excel 2016 running. Okay, so let's just give a, let's just maybe walk through the data set that I have here. Yeah, okay. so I have two variables. Uh, I have a gender variable. Uh, there's two levels of measurement associated with this uh, with this particular variable. This is my independent variable. This is the variable that's going to allow me to form my groups. Okay, so there's two levels of measurements. There's males, and there are females in this particular uh, in this particular. Uh, associated with this particular variable. Uh, my second variable, which is my which is my dependent variable, this is the variable that I want to see whether there's differences in the average uh, responses of males compared to the average responses of females. Uh, this particular variable is an NAQR, a negative acts questionnaire. Uh, that I suppose it's composed of 22 items. It's the reduced version of the negative acts questionnaire. It's composed of 22 items. And what we have here is that we have a composite score uh, for each of the 22 items uh, for each of the respondents. So for example, the first male has scored 1.18 on the NAQ or the Negative Acts Questionnaire. Uh, this questionnaire, this uh, the values uh, range from 1 to 7, 1 indicating that uh, it's your perception that Negative Acts aren't perpetrated on you within your organization, 7 meaning that there's there's a high frequency of Negative Acts perpetrated on you within your organization. And this is the typical way that variables would be laid out. Uh, they're laid out in columns. You can see very clearly that this is the gender variable and it's I suppose it's it's its components or it's the responses associated with this variable and this one here is the NAQR variable. Now what's important in Excel and what Excel's data analysis tool pack requires and uh, like what I've said in previous videos is that the the variables themselves yeah okay that the the scales are the the levels of measurement are listed as headers to columns okay and under each particular head and header uh, we have the values associated with the dependent variable so you can see for the males uh, I've taken all the male scores the first male is 1.18 that goes in under the male heading and uh, 1.14 goes under the male heading and uh, then we have the female scores uh, on this particular NAQR uh, scale are listed under the female heading okay so as I said uh, this video is all about uh, undertaking an independent samples t-test uh, which is a test that allows us to check whether there's evidence to suggest that the distributions that the two samples have been randomly selected from whether there's evidence to suggest that these two distributions have different mean values, have different center values, okay? Now, to do an independent samples t-test, there's two variants of it. There's one where we assume equal population variances. That means where we assume that the two samples have been drawn from populations that have the same variance. And then there's a second variant of the independent samples t-test that assumes that the populations uh, that the samples have been drawn from have different variances or have unequal variances. Now, to ascertain whether the variances are equal or in unequal, we usually, I suppose, run an F-test before we run the T-test to actually ascertain whether the variances are equal or unequal. So, to do this, let's run the F-test. So, I'm going to hit Data Analysis. Uh, in this situation, usually when you hit Data Analysis, the, the default option here is a NOVA single factor. So, I'm going to just scroll down to F-test to sample for variances, and I'm going to hit OK on that. Uh, let me just actually get rid of all of these particular options here, okay, for a moment, okay, usually that's set as 0 0.5 and usually this is empty here, okay, so let's just leave it like this for a moment. Now, the thing about the F-test, and I've actually uh, produced a video on this, the F-test in, in Excel is a one-sided test, okay, so we just want to find out whether there's a difference in variances, we don't care whether the male variance is greater than the female or if it's less than the females, either case would would be evidence to suggest that there's a difference okay now usually when we run our test we run at a particular significance level uh, so i'm running a two tail i want to run a two tail test 
because I don't care which way the difference is, just care whether there is a difference, okay? The difference could be over on the left-hand side or it could be in the right-hand tail, okay? Uh, and we usually run it at a significance level of 5%. But because this is a one-tailed test, I'm actually going to tell Excel and the Data Analysis Toolpack how much area I want in the right-hand tail. So I'm going to put 0 0.025, I'm going to put half my significance in the right-hand tail or alpha over 2. Okay. Another thing that's sort of important is that we put the variance, okay, we put the variable that has the largest variance in first and the variance, the, the variable that has the smallest variance in second. This will ensure that our test statistic is greater than one, which means that we can compare it to a right-hand tail critical value. If we do it the other way, we're going to be comparing to a left-hand tail critical value, and we just have to be careful in relation to the numbers uh, when we look at the numbers, because it's not as intuitive, yeah? Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the variance that, the variable that has the largest variance in first. Uh, actually, what is, the, which one has the largest variance? To actually calculate that, maybe what we should do is we should do some descriptive statistics. So I'm going to go descriptive statistics. I'm going to hit OK. And the values I'm going to put in. I've already defined the both columns. Let me maybe do this again. I'm going to select males, females, and I'm going to highlight all of them particular values. Okay, so I'm going to highlight the values. Okay, just highlight them all. Uh, there we go. Let's just go to the bottom of this here. Okay, the output range. Uh, I'm saying here uh, H3, which is just there. Okay, so I'm just let me just hit OK on here. I want descriptive statistics, and what we do, what we get is the descriptive statistics for the males. Okay, there they are. There, sorry, there they are. There, and the descriptive statistics for the females. There they are. There. So let's just actually have a look at these in a little bit more detail. Uh, so what you can actually see is that the variance for the males is 0.288. The variance for the females is 0.43. So actually, the largest variance is the female variance. So just to ensure that we're dealing with a right-hand tail critical value, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to put the female values in force into our F-test. Okay? So now, let's run the F-test. So I'm going to go to Data Analysis. I'm going to choose F-test. And as I said, what I'm going to put in first is I'm going to put in the female values first. Okay? So let's do that. So I'm going to choose the female values first. So females, I'm going to click on females, I'm going to highlight the whole column of female data. Make sure I have all of that there. It's gone a little bit beyond it. Okay, let me just come up here to the value. Okay, so there's the females in. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put in the males. Okay, so let's put in the males. We go back to the male distribution. Okay, we click on the males with labels and we'll just highlight all of the male values. It's pretty hard to see there. Uh, it's not as it's not as defined the highlighting of the of the particular values, uh, and as I said earlier, it's a one tail test. So I'm going to put half my area in the right hand tail, 0 0.025, and let me do the output. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to output the results of the F test uh, underneath the results of the descriptive statistics. So I'm just going to hit OK on that, and here's the results of the F test. Okay, so from a critical value approach. Don't forget, the null hypothesis for an F-test for the difference between two variances, the null hypothesis is that there's no difference between the variances. The alternative hypothesis is that there is a difference. Now, we reject the, alter we reject the null hypothesis when the test statistic, there's a the test statistic, when the test statistic is bigger than the critical value. Now, in this situation, the test statistic is 1.522, okay? but the critical value is 2.149. Clearly, the test statistic, my F value, is not bigger than my critical value. And as such, I cannot reject the null hypothesis. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to proceed and do an independent samples t-test assuming equal variances. Okay, so let's do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to data analysis. I'm going to scroll down to independent samples t-test. There's their t-test. That's a paired samples test. This is a t-test, two samples, assuming equal variances. The alternative is a t-test, two samples, assuming unequal variances. Now, our F-test result has just indicated that there's no evidence to suggest that they're unequal. So we should uh, continue under the assumption that the variances are equal. So now, I'm going to choose a t-test, two sample, assuming equal variances. And I'm going to hit OK on that. Okay. So now, what we need to put in is we need to put in our, our two variables. 
Uh, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put in the largest mean first, okay? Uh, which is once again the females has the largest mean and the smaller mean second. In which case the test statistic will be positive for us, okay? That's important, okay? Uh, so it's a small thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the largest, uh, the largest mean in first, which is the females. So the females are going to go in. So let's just put the females in here, okay? So we put the females in, and let's just scroll up here. 